Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and let's talk about the bulk review of all the good stuff that we did. We got a whole fat stack of comic books. I only did individual reviews for these guys here, but I got another, well, equally impressive, slightly larger stack that I haven't actually done individual reviews for. I'm going to do them all here, so um, just no particular order. Young Justice issue number nine. We're getting back on track to make this excellent. There's a Marvel comic book that does something just like that, maybe even better. We're going to get to that in a minute. But this was actually a pretty fun issue. I enjoyed this. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's talk about issue number one of uh, Spider-Verse. Issue number one of six. This feels to me like it's just your typical cash grab uh, like perfect synchronization hits every single check mark that you'd imagine a cash grab would be. There's a pointless story. It, it doesn't make sense. None of it, may, you know, the, the, the most superficial reasons for this comic book to even happen. Oh, how come we're not getting Peter Parker involved in this? Well, because we're the new age of heroes and we need to worry about us. Well, that's just stupid, but okay, let's make a comic book. Anyway, um, if it's really a dangerous situation, you call everybody in. So, yeah. Um, there's in, They're introducing a couple of new characters, at least one new character, in each and every single issue. I come to find out that in the um, uh, the back, that's actually um, um, uh, not characters they're necessarily going to introduce, but fan-based characters. That's also a really good idea, because technically, technically, if they're fan-created characters, they're just going to get one image in there. You're technically a published artist. So that's actually really cool. So um, if you want to get these, you know, first time uh, that, that these people have been published, boom, these issues are definitely going to be it. So make no mistake. There is no reason other than collector's value to get the, um, the Spider-Verse comic books that are out this year, 2019. Because, yeah. Anyway, Contagion, issue number one. I think most of us went into this thinking it's just going to be whatever. Uh, I know I grabbed the first issue just thinking um, it might be a write-off. Uh, Ed Brisson's only done one book that I never really liked, and that was X-Force most recently. But everything else that he's done is amazing. And in this, he continues the uh, reputation of being an amazing writer. This is, for me, a must-have miniature event, self-contained event. I am really looking forward to seeing how the next three issues turn out. Uh, I think the next issue is going to, whatever the next issues are, one of them is, I think the final one's going to be um, uh, Dr. Doom or um, or Fantastic Four, but they're going to have a few different ones in here. Iron, uh, Iron Fist, I think, is going to be the next one. Lois Lane, issue number four, super excited for this series, uh, not particularly excited over this issue. There's too little of the Lois Lane story, too much of Lois Lane's character having to finish up a bunch of other people's storylines, namely Brian Michael Bendis. Um, if Bendis can't finish his own stories, that's on you, bud. That's completely on you. I don't see any reason why a, an amazing writer like Greg Rucka has to finish up those stories. Maybe he feels compelled to. I don't know. Uh, but honestly, I feel like we could just have 12 or 100 issues of Lois Lane challenging the system and being her badass self. I would be so down for that. Unfortunately, this issue doesn't give us that. Let's talk about, really quickly, issue number 33 of Justice League. This series is, there's just way too much happening at way too quick of a speed. It's the exact same complaints I had in the first six to eight issues of this season of Justice League. Uh, this volume, I should say, of Justice League. There's just too much happening. For a while, James Tinney IV had slowed everything down, had, had helped out to explain things that weren't explained and to slow down the pace a little bit so that the rest of us could actually breathe. Um, this just feels like a sprint. And as a former runner who mostly did cross country, uh, I can honestly say that sprints are fine, but they only work in short durations. You can't have a two mile sprint. You'll die. Let's talk about Deceased, issue number five. This is already an amazing series, and in this one, I guess a lot of us maybe saw this coming, but it was still absurdly out of this world and definitely worth a choke-up moment or two. Um, this is literally the issue that hope dies. Uh, in every way that you can possibly imagine, that being the term, that happens. Immortal Hulk, issue number 24. This is an amazing series. I don't want to hear any uh, back talk about it. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, I can also talk about um, Absolute Carnage, Immortal Hulk. That was, wow, not expecting that. 
genuinely did not expect that. Wow. For, um, I had to get that on digital. I just, uh, today was just a terrible week for me as a human being. And to come across, uh, like, like I just, I went to the comic book store and I was already in a horrible, like I actually felt toxic inside. Like everything about me was bad. And when I saw that things just weren't done, they were rushing to get stuff done. And in my head, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Uh, they should have this stuff done, but I'm not there. I don't know what the situation is with these guys. It was literally just on me. Um, some of the guys in there were also having a bad day and I, I like that just didn't, that didn't work well. It clashed right away. I was like, you know what? I usually like these guys before one of us says something to the other that we're not going to recover from easily. I'm just going to not do the, uh, this week in comics. So I just, I went up to, um, um, Carlos before he left for, uh, um, uh, New York city comic con. And, uh, I was just like, you know what? Uh, listen, dude, I, I can't do the thing today. I'm sorry. Um, can I just get my comic books and just boogie? He's like, yeah, of course, dude. Just, you know, go take it easy, rest, whatever. And that's really what I needed to do. Hence, not a lot of videos this week. Sorry. But that being the case, uh, I did have to get the, I forgot to get the, um, uh, Absolute Carnage, um, uh, Immortal Hulk, uh, tie-in. You can see, if you've been reading the Immortal Hulk, uh, I had to get it on um, Comixology because I forgot to get it at the comic book store. So, oh well. Uh, I will probably go back and buy it. I'm sure there'll be one left for me. You know, I should have thought better. I'm, I'm so out of this world today, that, that or this week, that's whatever. I forgot to actually call the comic book store and said, hey, put one in my uh, bin. But anyway, yes, uh, I, I do actually want the physical copy of it because it does fit in and tie in perfectly with the uh, the comic book itself. So if you've been reading the uh, actual Immortal Hulk comic book, you know exactly where this ties in. You've already read these parts. You didn't read what happened that night. Absolute Carnage, uh, Immortal Hulk, issue number one, does that for us. This was actually really cool. This was a very cool way. I think you know who the Hulk, who Banner and Joe Fixit and all these people are talking to when they're talking to them. But it, it, just in case you don't, I'm not going to spoil it for you. It is really fun. Genuinely a fun comic book. A whole lot of talking, but it's not like Ben to speak talking. It's just, it's fantastic. Al Ewing does it. The art is a little bit off because we're used to Bennett doing it. It is what it is, man. This was a fantastic comic. I'm going to call this a must-read tie-in because it just further emphasizes the, the Hulk story. So, yeah. Let's get talking about the uh, the other books that I actually got, but I didn't do the reviews for. Savage Avengers, issue number six. This was um, um, uh, uh, Duggan. Um, what do you call it? Jerry Duggan on this. Kim Jacinto doing the art. Uh, Tamara Bonvillain in here. This is a really good book, man. I enjoyed the hell out of this. This issue is called Blood Brothers. You'll know why right away. You see the two people who are actually in the comic book right on the front, Conan and, and Punisher. Um, uh, um, Duggan has been writing the Conan books, and since he's not trying to involve the Red Queen in this, or the Red Witch in this, Crimson Witch, whatever the heck she's called, um, this is just a typical good Conan story. And that just simply pulls in the most uh, Marvel-esque version of Conan into the book. Uh, which is the Punisher, Frank Castle. There are a couple lines in here on both of these guys' parts which just emphasize the characters so well. It's a really great story. Every great reason for them to be in here. Um, the, the story itself is easy to follow, and at the same time, it feels like a great Conan and Punisher story. Uh, I think that, honestly, Savage Avengers, scrap that. Just have these two running around with each other, hanging out. Getting into like their their disagreements where they can actually be okay with the disagreements. They're literally like, whatever, I don't care. I would like to see these two get into, a, you know, or just go into a bar and start drinking. I'd like to see them philicize with each other. Conan mostly philicized with uh, Punisher in this, which was, it was great. It was amazing because his introspective in life is probably the thing that we love the most. But him, um, actually, I should probably open it up and show you a couple of the pictures inside. Um, there's a part in here where, uh, like, it's just, it's, it's violent and bloody as either of the books should be individually. There's a part in here where they, they choose to agree with each other on something, uh, agree to disagree on something. There's a, a part in here where, where, like, they're, they're actually walking through Antarctica. They actually show the, the part, I can show it right in the, uh, I think it's right in the beginning. Yes, here. You see where the Savage Land is? 
And then towards the end, the end of the book, they actually show where they had to go. Here's the image for the next issue. Oh, hells yes. God, it loves me some Electra. Uh, but they actually... Okay, I can't show you the last page because it's going to show you too much of what's upcoming. Uh, but this here, this shows you where they had to go. So that was actually pretty cool. Uh, they had to march across Antarctica. Mind you, that's a place where no one actually permanently resides. I mean, because it's that effing cold. But great commentary about how Conan was born in snow and he'll be damned if he dies in the snow. Um, they're, they're carrying the Punisher's family, because the, the bodies are in the box, if you've been reading the previous issues, across the continent uh, to get to um, the, the, the closest. They're, they're following a plane that they saw going and trying to guesstimate where it, it went by looking at a blank horizon. But um, now there's a moment here where it's like, you know, uh, Conan says, you know, we could just burn your family. A funeral pyre is perfectly acceptable because it's hard to carry them across this, this treacherous wasteland. He's like, no, um, I've been carrying them this far. I'm going to keep carrying them. And, he, and there's a comment later on where he's like, you know, you've been carrying your family. Uh, I think you've been carrying your family with you your whole life. It's like, God damn, this is good. Like this was, I, I, I seriously, you guys know if you've been following me uh, reading these books, I've been almost falling off this series for a while now and or for a couple issues now. I'm glad I stuck with it because of issues like this. Man, just seriously, even Elektra, much as I love Elektra, scrap all these characters, just have a Conan and Punisher book, a solo series, and just, yeah, because wow. Another wow book is Shang-Chi, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Swordmaster issue number four. Great, 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 amazing moments in this book. I don't think anybody's going to have any problems with this book. The first story, which is just the uh, the webcomic put into comic book form, I believe, for the first time, is amazing and profound and wow things start to get a little bit crazy you you you're starting to understand more and more the history of the sword uh the backup story with uh incredible art by ario andito um and andito my, my tongue stuck to my palate in that moment um it was really really sick if i had to make any complaint about the art itself it would be that uh we keep on seeing too much of the teeth uh, I would like to see the Aries of, um, what is it, um, uh, Perez's Aries, his his version of that, you know, black-faced Aries, which obviously this is where the inspiration comes from in the first place, uh, back in the Wonder Woman comic books, but Anandito does a great job. I just wish that he wouldn't show the teeth all the time, because the separated teeth like that constantly being shown, it's it's a little bit weird sometimes. When you see, you know, images of no teeth like this, it's beautiful. Um, when the teeth are closed, they're also beautiful, but there are moments in here where, yeah, you just, you, you constantly see the teeth like this and it's like, it, it, it's a little bit buggy. It, it bugs me a little bit, but that being said, it's still an amazing, amazing book. Oh, by the way, guys, tell me how you like this camera. Um, I'm actually using the back of my, uh, iPhone XR right now. A lot of people ask me, what, what setup do you use? Just told you. So let me know uh, how you how you like the uh, setup on this. But the uh, the backup story, to me, is actually the really amazing one. Uh, it's the one that you're not going to get for free online. It's the one that you're going to see, well, if you're, if you're playing by the rules, um, the ones that weren't put up for free by the people online. Um, but the, the, the backup story in here is amazing. Seeing Shang-Chi trying to train um, um, uh, Lin Lai on this, and also having to deal with the idea, that wasn't supposed to happen, uh, also having to deal with the idea that here's this god of war, Ares, um, but realizing that they have to work together and convincing Ares, who's very boneheaded, to have to work with him, really good. This book was uh, issue number 25 of um, Runaways was pretty good. I'm saying pretty good because it said issue number 25 it's a quarterly book and all of a sudden it's a quarterly issue i should say and it's like dude two years running of this book going starting with the third year on this issue and i expected a double-sized issue something like that but i don't get that we get more addressing of uh gib in here which is really important but for the most part it's really just the same old thing they just keep on telling the same old story and uh, it's it's very slow at this point, and I'm getting to the point where I want to start yelling. Could we start actually doing something soon? Because, excuse me, you just introduced a new hero. We get to see the character and all that stuff, and it's like, okay, that's cool. 
Uh, so this issue and the previous issue, uh, first cameo appearance and first official appearance of the new character. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, other than that, there's not a, there's not really enough happening. Uh, Princess Power, hysterical in the very beginning of this, though, I gotta say, trying to sacrifice one of her beloved stuffed animals for the sake of trying to feed Gib. Issue 16 of The Punisher is the final issue of this series. I don't know what they're gonna, or I do actually know what they're gonna do afterwards. Some guy named, uh, Garth Ennis. I, has he ever written a good Punisher book before? Sarcasm. Um, uh, what do you call it? He's gonna be taking over with, uh, Punisher Soviet. Um, I'm seriously looking forward to this. It's going to be in the Punisher Max series, which is, to me, besides the Jessica Jones stuff, was the only one really worthy of getting. The first, I always say, the first Fool Killer series was good in Punisher Max. The second one that actually had the Punisher in it also wasn't that good, but this is literally like the, the, the Punisher um, uh, war, jur uh, war Journal. The Punisher uh, Max series was the best of the Max series, hands down. Um, I didn't talk enough about this. It's an ending. It feels like a rush ending. There is a letter by um, Rosenberg in the back of this, which is very necessary as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but I actually didn't realize that this was ending. I, I didn't notice. I didn't see the writing on the wall. I didn't see the articles. I didn't see any tweets. I, I don't use Twitter enough. But um, yeah, it, it is what it is. I didn't realize it was going to end and it just ended and it felt like it just ended and that's kind of sad, but whatever is what it is. Uh, we got Mezzo issue number one. Not a lot of people reviewing this. I'm not entirely sure why. This is the pre premiere edition. Uh, you can see the people who were involved in this book here. Go ahead and pause if thou wilt. But um, this is the only issue that will actually be released. The only single issue to my understanding that will actually be released. They want this to be a web comic book. Just the first one will be released regular. So you can find it on, um, you can find it on a few places. I see if I can actually find it swiftly. There we go. Comixology and Kindle. And also this one, whatever this one is. I don't know what that one is. I can't pronounce it. Uh, so it's hard to look it up. Sinwiz Comics, I think it is. Shinwiz. Anyway, uh, or you can wait until the complete story comes to uh, trade paperback, which will be available in December of 2019. So that's actually going to come out pretty quick. So, um, but about the book itself, it's uh, it's a story about legacy. It's a story about uh, family genealogy. It's a family. Uh, it's a story about war and what it means to go to war. And I don't really know that much else about where it's going yet either but there is a lot of tradition in here for the uh, it's highly based off of aztec and and mayan um mythology which is pretty cool the inca mythology also all uh, all three of them it's really heavily influenced by that uh, i am looking forward to where it's going but i'll probably wait until the trade paperback to actually read it uh unless the guys themselves want to contact me and send me the um the digital comics I, I usually don't like to review digital comics but i am curious enough about this that i will issue by issue review these by um digital if they want to send them to me uh as far as me actually buying them though i don't want to buy the digital comics and the trade also so like i said i'll probably just wait until the trade comes out and see what's up uh, another final issue is issue number 20 of Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme. No, just Doctor Strange. Just Doctor Strange. This comic is going to immediately jump into the Doctor Strange Surgeon Supreme. The previous issue of this explained why. Go check out my individual review for that. Um, not doing an individual review for this just because, like I said, it's really busy this week. But Kana returns, which is always welcome. She is a gorgeous character. She is a character who I could see Doctor Strange actually being with. I like her as an old school Doctor Strange person. A lot of people are going to be pissed at me saying this. Oh well. I actually like the idea of Strange being with Kana more than I like his relationship with Clea. Is what it is, man. Uh, that's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with me, but yeah. Um, the Ancient One appears in this, but in a very different way. Um, Doctor Strange defeating an enemy that he has no idea what it is is very interesting in this, especially since that enemy doesn't know who he is. Uh, we get a glimpse of what we could see in Doctor Strange Surgeon Supreme because Mark Wade does a great job of showing how um, since Doctor Strange wasn't able to move his hands very well, mind you, the movie is going to explain something differently 
All right, the movie's going to explain this differently. Uh, but this is not the movie, this is the comic book. The movie explained how, oh, it doesn't matter if you can move your hands well or not. It's not about the hand movements. Look, here's a guy who's missing uh, his hand to begin with. That's actually uh, Wong's father in the comic books. Uh, Harun, I think his name is. Harun, Harun. Um, ha Haman, Hama Hamar. I forget what it is, but something like that. Anyway, he, um, he was actually missing a hand in the movie. It's like, look, he doesn't even have a hand. So it's not about the finger movements, all right? It's about just believing that you can do it. Here, you'd figure it should be the same thing, but mind you, this is not the movie. This is the comic book. So, semantic um, manipulation of your fingers and things like that, the things that you actually say, all of it, you do actually get used to it uh, for, for after a while. So, the idea that he can move his fingers a whole lot better, now, better than most of us can because he's the, the best surgeon in the world, uh, or at least was, who knows what's going to happen in the upcoming story, bang. Uh, there's a great reason explained why he continues doing what he's doing. Um, ma mainly, like, uh, Bats the dog. Um, great idea. He goes and explains, hey, man, listen, being, you know, uh, being a surgeon, you help one person, you know, a month, something like that, maybe 10 people a month, whatever. You, you go to surgery, you spend all these hours, you heal one person, congratulations. Uh, but being Sorcerer Supreme, one demon escapes and comes onto the planet, kills billions, kills millions, you know what I'm saying? Look at how many people you saved by, by stopping the demon as opposed to doing surgery. He's like, yeah, but if I am still the best surgeon in the world, well then, you know, what's up with that? You know, like, how do I just ignore that? So maybe I can try and find a way to balance both. I think that's going to be great, and it's a hell of a price to pay for magic as far as I'm concerned. Uh, on top of that, bleeding out is the idea that, which is established right in the beginning of the story, hey, Dr. Strange, you're, you used to be the best surgeon in the world, but we don't necessarily have to open people up to put a, a tube inside. We could just use x-rays to, to see things now. Hey, you don't necessarily have to open someone up to get a scalpel inside anymore. We can do it through gamma technology now. Hey, Dr. Strange, the world has changed and, and the modern medicine, modern science has changed in the field of medicine. So there's a lot he has to learn. Uh, what's the best way he can do that? Basically, uh, enter the matrix, all right, and get the stuff downloaded, all the new stuff from the internet downloaded into his brain. But what's the best way to do that? I did mention Kano was in this, right? Uh, technomancy as opposed to regular uh, uh, thaumaturgy. Yeah, very great way to bring her back. Fantastic. Issue number 12 of Daredevil. Kingpin goes back to his murderous ways quite by accident because he loses it a little bit. Um, there's a person here who causes him, causes him to lose it. Uh, yeah, this was, this was something else. This was a hell of a book, a walk through hell part two. Uh, Daredevil finally has to acknowledge that he's not who he used. Matt Murdock has to acknowledge that he's not Daredevil anymore. He still refers to himself as used to being Daredevil. He has to get used to the idea that, yeah, he's not anymore. He sucks at it right now. Uh, Kingpin at a dinner party where he doesn't belong there. He realizes that they did actually bring him there just to mess with him. He is a public official. They're there to... Uh, maybe to bribe him, but definitely to mess with him a little bit and to make fun of him and to tease him. He he comes in, like, look at it. He comes in a suit. Meanwhile, they're all in, in regular, like, polo shirts and things like that. They just want to mess with him. That's that's all it really is. And you think it's not the case because you have, like, the, the good cop, bad cop um, mentality here. It quickly uh, devolves into a lot worse. And when Kingpin goes to try and refresh himself, and you think about the... Um, what was that one movie? Um, the Hustler, featuring um, um, what the heck is his name? Um, Minnesota Fats was played played by Patrick, uh, not Patrick Gleason. That's a comic book guy. Um, Jackie Gleason, Jackie Gleason from the Honeymooners, Ralph Cramden. Um, yeah, he plays Minnesota Fats, an actual historical character, and Paul Newman plays well the Hustler, a guy who has to learn from the best, even though he's also trying to beat. The best. It's a great movie. It's in black and white. Take two hours out of your day and go watch that movie if you haven't already. It's an amazing movie. And then for the sake of uh, shits and giggles, go and check out The Color of Money featuring Tom Cruise and Paul Newman afterwards. A lot of people didn't like it because it wasn't as good as the first movie, you know, The Hustler, but it is a continuation of it. Fast Eddie, man. Woo! Amazing, amazing stories. Anyway, um, that, that's kind of what that reminded me of. Uh, so here we got um, issue number 10 of The Champions. Another final issue. Um, 
there's gonna be people who have their own opinion on what happens, like why the story had to end. But uh, you know, you, you can have your opinions ba uh, based on uh, your own biases and observations. That's cool. Or you can actually look at what the industry professionals are saying. And you can also compare that. This is what um, rational people do. Compare it with what all the people in the back say, including Jim Zub, who gives a very different story here than what he gives on Twitter. And if you ever talk to him in person. Yeah. Uh, also on Facebook, he does the same thing. He, 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 um, he's cool. Uh, uh, or he, he says what he really thinks on Facebook and, and Twitter. But here, yeah. And if you meet him in person, very, you know, like very woo, powerful, um, you know, his opinion on what happened. But uh, here he just gives a very um, uh, corporate <laughs> um, indicator of what happened. But that being said, it is the final issue. Uh, he really only had two issues to wrap things up. Um, it's Jim Zub. And just, it is what it is, man. There are people who are on the bandwagon of Zub and people who aren't. But for the most part, it's Zub. So you have to trust that he's going to do a great job in this. I can, if you trust my words on it, he does a great job with only two issues to wrap up a story that was a slow burn, that was meant to be a slow burn told over a long period of time and really work in the fine nitty gritty details and make you actually feel the comic book as opposed to just, you know, here's my stories, blah, because he, we've seen that he can do both. His World of Wakanda book, not World of Wakanda, Agents of Wakanda book that he's doing right now. Um, um, who did the World of Wakanda book? I think that was Roxanne Gay, which I'm actually disappointed that one ended also, but is what it is. Um, anyway, the, the Agents of Wakanda book, um, you can see that he's doing a very fast-paced story in there. So it, it is what people want. It is what people want. All of these books could wind up ending. Who knows? But um, yeah, Champions number 10 really good way to end things there's only one story that's not truly ended but it makes sense why that one's not ending and or not ending and that's the spider-man story all right marvel comics issue number 1001 i actually liked this but that being said only two stories in here were essentially fruitless okay so do you need to buy this comic book maybe for the first and the last page the story is done by al ewing Realistically, the only superstar in here is Al Ewing. There, that's not to say that some of the other stories in here aren't bad. Remember, this is one page per artist, excuse me, per artist and um, writer team, unless the artist is also the writer, which that happens once in a while in here. But it's only one page of each character. Well, actually, some character like Spider Man gets multiple um, stories in here, but one person gets one story. And it's basically just, you know, why they fight, why they do what they want to do. The Captain America one was actually the most annoying. It actually somewhat infuriated me, but just as a comic book nerd, not as an actual human being. Um, that being said, uh, only the first page and the last page on here were actually important. And those were the Ewing stories. Uh, important for the overall story that's going to turn over into, um, a oh crap, Incoming, I think is the name of that story. Uh, the uh, I believe it's called Incoming. Uh, they don't give it here. But anyway, um, and here's all the people who were involved in the story, like a lot of people. So you can get this if you want, or you can just go to your comic book store, open it up, read the first page, read the last page. You'll understand what's happening, and you'll be ready for Incoming. All the other stories in between were, you know, m many of them, were, most of them actually were beautiful. Some of them were exceptionally beautiful. One of them sucked, in my opinion. And the, um, the other ones were, you know, they were okay. They were great. They were better than fillers, you know what I'm saying? But essentially, that was their, their purpose, is to be fillers. Um, Ed Brisson doing the Ghost Rider. I did mention how much I love Ed Brisson, right? <laughs> this is no exception to the rule. This is Ghost Rider, issue number one. I can't wait to see more of this. Um, it's not just Brisson doing this. Sorry, let me try and find the... Uh, the title page it's it's not in the front so it makes it more difficult there we go uh aaron cooter nice aaron cooter doing the art uh there's some pros and cons to the art in here uh i mostly liked it i mostly liked it but it's not as good as this front issue uh, or this front cover like wow but this is the king of hell part one this was a great 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 story man i can't wait to see how this continues it's johnny blaze trying to get a hold of the world he finally gets to escape hell but uh how he's gonna go back i don't know but um 
He finally got to escape hell to try and capture a bunch of demons who, who did leave. He's trying to get uh, Danny Ketch involved so that, you know, he doesn't have to leave so often. But whatever it is, um, he's actually becoming the devil. And it's important they talk about the bloodline in here. Uh, they, they talk about a whole bunch in here. Um, Brisson really studied up on the history of the Ghost Rider, like the, the, the title, the Ghost Rider, all the Ghost Riders so that he could write this story. And it really feels like a, a return to the original uh, Danny Ketch Ghost Rider series. Uh, hopefully it won't get so out of control. I really doubt it because it is Brisson on this. But that story did get out of control after a while. Like, dude, I, I can't even follow this at this point. But it really is good. Like this, this first issue, it gives you a good inclination of what's going to happen in the future. Wow, I am all on board for this. I think you guys will too. That's it for the bulk comic reviews. Uh, this is all the comic books that I read this week. Uh, granted, I did also go to a dollar store and I grabbed a whole bunch of trades from, uh, what was it, Dollarama? Yeah, they had a whole bunch of trades available. So uh, I went crazy <laughs> and I bought all the ones that I really wanted to read. Some of them I've read already, but others I haven't. But uh, yeah, so maybe I'll get around to a spotlight on story on these, like maybe once a week or so. We'll see. Eh, hard to put those back. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it. So I'm out. Um, yeah, consider also scrolling down in the um, description box and check out my patron. Guys, what I want to do is I want to actually talk about what I can do for you on patron. So what can I do for you to get you to become a patron on Patreon? All right, so like, how can we actually help each other? I'm gonna continue doing my bulk reviews. I'll continue doing the, um, and I'll talk about it in the podcast, which should air tonight. I try, I, I'm gonna change the name to a live stream because I am gonna try and actively find people to do a podcast with me. I think that that would help the channel a lot to get it out there more, but that being said, um, seriously, comments below. How can I help you to want to become a patron. What can I do to get you guys to become a patron? All right, you help me out with that and I will absolutely help you out with that. All right, done. Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.